<laughs> it's a pretty elaborate joke. All right. Um, well, we are going to be on Inferno, ladies and gentlemen. This is the ESCA Invite League Season 17, and it looks like we're actually live already here. Yep, and luckily we're not on the Nile, so we're gonna, it's going to be pretty clean. We should be able to see who kills who without having to turn to Akur for the answer. So... This is going to be a man advantage now for Epsilon. And because this is ESCA, the signs are already determined right from the start. So there is no knife round. And one thing that's going to be nice or potentially here in this match is that there are overtimes in ESCA. Unlike Star Series where you can get ties, we could go to overtime in this match. But that's the differences. And now we are looking at Dignitas just trying to rush up towards A. And they've already got a shot on FX. Yeah, nicely. They return the frag here down in the pit, though. We do have the one CT trying to defend, looking for the headshot. going to get it mid-air on Sitlink. That's a really nice shot coming out. And Device will take down GMX, though. Still no bomb plant happening. They're fighting it out here, and it's taking Dignitas quite a while. Now, they're finally going to be able to put the bomb down. It's a three-on-three. -three. Uh, two guys stuck on the site right now, and Wants is looking to try and get through apartments to change up the angles, but... We do have Strafe and Win from Pit who manages to find the headshot on Wands. The smoke goes down to buy even more time. But Uzi's going to track down one and they're looking for AC. And he's not going to be around for too long. A Uzi picking up both kills to clean up this site. And they have two kits on Epsilon. So plenty of time to get this defuse. Okay, uh, do you agree with that smoke vendetta? It seemed like that could have worked both for and against the CTs coming in. Do you mean the smoke on the site? Or yeah. Or, yeah, uh, I guess it's okay. They probably had a pr pretty good idea as to where the bomb was, given how they had one guy in pit already. So it's not the worst, and it kind of messes up for everyone who's on site. So it's not like Izzy and the guy who was with him in that spot could actually do anything about it without running out of the smoke, which kind of makes them easy targets. Ah, well, turns out really well for the Epsilon squad, so really nicely done here. And now the Danes, even though they do have a Swedish flag, they're going to try and rush for this B-bomb site. And they're running for a smoke into a uh, screen, which is not a good idea. So far he's landed three headshots. going to be a fourth one and a very quick round indeed for Epsilon, which is uh, nicely handled here by the uh, by the Frenchman. Just not dropping anyone and keeping it cool like that. It's going to be 2-0 and o here for the CT side. And actually, can we give a big shout out to ESCA for helping us out? Because actually, ESCA now have got us on the main GoTV stem, which means we don't have any lag, if you guys are noticing. So, big shout out to ESCA for helping us out with this stuff. That's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now we actually have a very smooth experience. Silky, man. Silky. Yeah. I was really impressed with Scream there, though. I mean, he was flashed for two of those frags at the start. So, just, just the sixth sense kicking in. Hopefully, he can keep landing shots like that. This is going to be the big half for Epsilon, basically, I think. Because once it gets to the T side, I think they're going to start to struggle somewhat. But the CT side, if it can set up properly for Scream, for Foxio to, to start landing those shots, this could be all about Epsilon just trying to get 10 rounds in this half. And they need to do that. They do need that. GMX goes down early on. That was Fetish with a, with a shot from the Galil, in fact, to take him down. It gives them a bit of an opening on the map, but um, oh, Epsilon can still return the frag. And FX Joe is actually alone here towards the apartments. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of him being all alone, but I guess he's not fully committed to the apartments hold here. He could fall back through Boiler Room. He could fall back, but he does leave a pretty big opening for Dignitas to, well, basically po poach on if they manage to pick him off or just get him out of position because Epsilon haven't rotated anyone from B yet over to, over to A. Now they're coming in here. Strafe is looking for them, but AC's going to take one down. It's FX Joe in the pit, and he's going to get overwhelmed. He picks up the one kill. There's always no chance he could have done more than that. So, uh, I mean, Semna, they ended up holding two people A, two people B, and they were up against five people. You know, whichever bomb sign Dignitas took, they would have come in with, uh, with four or five people. So I'm not sure that was a good idea. It's, uh, it's really tough, basically, to, to make the call there, don't you think? I mean, as far as, like, actually where you're going to be setting up, unless they have a smoke to be able to cut off the top of Banana, they can leave one guy there behind that smoke and then things work out. But I don't think Epsilon actually had that going for them. So they did have an incendiary that did, that did herd the rest of Ting Dignitas from Arch towards Short, but it still came down to landing the shots, right? And AC got a great entry frag on the man trying to rotate in. I'm not sure exactly who it was, if it was GMX or not. No, GMX got picked off early, so it was probably Strafe. Uh, but, Poirot, yeah, yeah Poirot. I, I, th I think the biggest th or the guess most effective thing that Epsilon could have done in that round is simply if they want to commit with FXO up in apps right there or by the boiler room, then they would have needed Poirot to actually play aggressively in apps as well and simply give up mid, give up mid control and then try to set up for a retake with the two guys from B coming in. Uh, with them kind of falling back into sight, they are forced to take the fight without giving any room for Scream and Uzi on the B bomb site to mm -hmm. rotate over. 
Well, this time Epsilon have a forward position on Banana and it's going to give them an early kill device. Just caught looking the wrong way. And actually, the way that Strafe is holding right here with a Mag 7 instead, I'm kind of more a fan of it than I am with the uh, with the FAMAS that uh, that, it, that FX Joe had in the previous round. So we'll see if he can pick up a kill here. They are slowly going to be coming. Once is already checking. They check the bedroom. But if they walk out onto the stairwell here, they're going to get a face full of lead. Yeah, it's the big surprise shot. Wants is about to round the corner. There you go. Drop down to 14 instantly. And unfortunately, their Puajo can't really follow up on it. He's going to be wise, actually, and just back off and try and change the angle because he does have GMX watching his back right now from apartments. They change up their positions, trying to play off that swag. Yeah. But at least they got some information as to what Team Dignitas were doing with that one guy. Right, this movement in this round from, and I guess this is a little bit what you were saying earlier, uh, Vendetta, is this time they actually had a second guy in apartments that could help out. And I definitely agree with you. that That's a much more uh, reliable setup for them to work with. Now they've fallen back to a slightly safer position, and they can afford to do that this time because they do have the man advantage. FX is going to be flashed in onto short, and he's going to take down one person. Then he dies, but this is still not looking too bad for Epsilon. And this nope. is going to be a B-split. Yeah, if they exactly. Can take out, if they can take out Uzi, this should be Dignitas Dram. One for one trade, and that's going to be the opening here. There is still a Scream alive on this B side. However, behind new boxes, AC will find the kill. And with nine seconds left on the clock, the bomb plan is going to happen in the end. It's a two on two situation now. And GMX isn't too far away. We still have Puajo, or we had Puajo and Banana until Sipnix got a headshot on him. And now it's all down to GMX for the retake. And it's just not going to happen. Sipnix already putting shots on him with the help of AC. All right, then. So I, I would say a, a scary B-take coming out there from Dignitas if they hadn't got the kill on uh, on Scream and then the, also the kill on Archway. I mean, a lot of things that could have gone wrong with that with that B-push, but it didn't. And that's going to put Dignitas now in a really great position. Um, they saved one rifle. I guess two of the members could buy, but I s expect Dignitas... Oh, sorry, Epsilon's pretty going to save right here. Uh, this should be a save round. It's still so, so early on that you don't want to make or put yourself in a position where everything can spiral out of control we have to double eco and fall even further behind so i think that just straight up eco is the easiest way to go about it and you, you can see the guys who actually have money on epsilon are picking up czs yeah and the smoke picked up oh another cz picked up on scream actually dropping them down to 1800 bucks so he make he invests 800 bucks in this round now that the cz is up to 500 dollars instead of 300 dollars. so that was a change that was made after gamescom but we still have three CZs picked up on Epsilon, and they're willing to just try and hold angles with this. Not really overcommitting until Puajo decides to take a fight in apartments, look, trying to peek down towards T-Apps, and he gets caught out by Sipnik, so that's not going to help things here. GMX is still alive, but he's been spotted out from short, and now things are about to get pretty dicey here on the A site. Dignitas running in here is a little bit dangerous, but I mean, Sipnik's actually flying out of the air with the AK held down mouse one and still got the headshot, and he's going to pick up another three kills after that. So that's Sipnix with a... With a quad kill, just one more for the ace. I mean, it's an anti-eco here for Dignitas, so expect him to take the round, but the CZ-75 is nowhere near as effective as maybe Epsilon would have hoped in this round. No, definitely not. Once we'll find Uzi lurking at top mid. And unfortunately, that just did not play out, but that was still an eco round. And look at the damage dealt. I mean, Device and Wants, 9 health on Wants, 2 health on Device. That, that was just... I mean, that's 11 health away from that being a successful eco round as far as Epsilon are concerned. So it was just one of those rounds where it didn't go their way. Oh, and now they've picked up the uh, the the AWP on on FX show. So Vendetta, do you think that's a smart choice on Inferno? I think definitely that's a smart choice because FX is kind of similar to Kenny in the fact that he's a pretty mobile opera, and that's hell to play versus on a map like Inferno. And we've seen it before from him, haven't we? Uh, how incredible FX show could be. It seems like his consistency is not exactly where where at least I would want it to be. That does, certainly doesn't mean he's a bad opera, and I, I think you're right. It is pretty a good choice. And even this Max 7 here from Strafe, I don't actually think is that bad. When he's playing like he is right now, pretty aggressively, I still wish they had one more person covering him. I, I think... This kind of place, what we sometimes see if you fly around, do on NIP when NIP are playing the CT side of Inferno, is him going kind of alone. But in the meantime, at the B-bomb site, look at this. Scream actually gets that headshot, even halfway flashed. He still picks up the kill. Ace, he's going to return it. And now they're knifing Scream inside the smoke. He's going to go down to the device. That's a little bit dirty. That was a bit ridiculous. How in the hell did they not spot that out sooner? I mean, they were both blocking each other in the smoke for ages there. And that could have been totally different had Uzi actually picked up his kill because then he can help scream out in that position. But Fox is still alive and from construction manages to pick up the first frag here on device, turns it into a three on three retake and Epsilon, no fear. They're actually going in here to try and take this fight. They 
want to do it. I mean, they can't afford to lose that many more rounds. They've got to be careful, and there's a great kill, but Fetish will return it. Sipnix is in potentially a bad spot here. He might have to take a fight. He will, and is going to take him down. They can't defuse the bomb. They're running. Oh, Epsilon. They take the bomb site, but not with enough time left. I was going to say, I mean, Sipnix's position there wasn't necessarily all that good, but it turns out just fine for him anyway. It worked out in the end. All he had to do was basically not die sooner, which he did a perfectly good job of. So even though the after plan could have been better for Dignitas' side, um, I guess we have to credit Epsilon with a good retake. Unfortunately for them, it wasn't fast enough. Oh, man. And that makes it a little bit tricky now for the uh, for the French side. They did manage to save the rifles, so they have got going for them. Fox Show down here does spot the elbow of AC, and that's enough to get the kill. So a nice start here. That's, I mean, if you pick up an AWP on Inferno, this is how you want it to play out. I'm wondering about Fetish. Fetish is trying to find the angle here, but GMX holding from short plays the pillar perfectly. Will get out of there alive. Strafe managing to do some damage to Sipnix up in the apartments as well. Is definitely going to slow down Team Dignitas. They're in a two on five, or a three on five situation, rather. I thought once was going to get picked off there. But it's definitely falling apart a little bit here for the Danes. Oxio going a long way towards helping them. Sipnix still alive, but he gets flashed in on, and that was near perfect execution from Epsilon. That was... Are you kidding me? But the, the <laughs> molly from Sipnix actually still kills Strafe. And that's such a shame, because I think you're absolutely right. That was that was a textbook flashbang. That's the sort of flashbang you want to see in like a video on the on the CSGO subreddit, right? How to how to throw a really cinematic flashbang. It had like a, a perfect uh you know, a perfect arch. You could almost draw an equation for that one, right? A little All bit right. of top spin. Land exactly. right there. Yeah. yeah. That was nice. That was that was a nice hold. And that's I think going to be what's so important for Epsilon is a lot of it I think comes down to Epsilon or to Foxio and Scream for them to for, to land those shots and to create the opportunities and foxio you know as ven said he's such a mobile opera he can be anywhere on the map essentially it's so tough to predict where he's going to be coming from so him getting the entries is a big deal this time he does go down though so maybe you cursed him a little bit then but epsilon have a good hold still and scream did get the instant return frag now he's going to flash uzi in actually they're going to molotov first to try and force someone out and then the flash to follow is that what's happening here there's a flashbang so an interesting idea here from Epsilon. This could have definitely worked. Unfortunately for them, the Dignitas players were a little bit further behind, but if they'd got caught in a position where they would have had to move forward to prevent basically getting burned by the Molotov, then the follow-up flashbang could be really cool. Not at all a bad idea for uh, from Epsilon here. Certainly not. But now it kind of slows down here because we're back into a 4-on-4, four four, so the advantages sort of come back to Team Dignitas. And they're still spread out over in apartments Hey, Apps, looking to see if anybody's going to be peeking around. There's still 45 seconds left, and Fetish is going to set up the fake. He's got the flash to go, or the smoke, rather, to go in to block off coils. He's going to have the molly to go behind new boxes. This is going to get Uzi kind of dancing around, wondering, but it's going to be the A play after all, and GMX already stopping it. Device fighting in the middle. That's a great headshot from GMX once again, but it works out anyway. They will get the bomb down, and... I don't know, I actually think Epsilon had the right idea because they had a 4-on-4 four on, four on their hands and they put three guys in a bomb site, which turned out to be the right bomb site. They just maybe took the fight a little bit too close to the middle instead of defending the bomb site, but it's it's always easy to say that once it's already happened. Device waiting on the corners, already spotted out Uzi. And now, well, it's going to be really tough here for the French player to get in. He spotted one person, the other one, he's trapped behind this pillar. He's going to have to get the kill quick. He can't. Device will take him down for a triple kill, and it's now five rounds for Dignitas on this terrorist side. Vendetta, do you think Epsilon did something uh, something wrong in that in that uh, a hold? I actually think you're quite on the spot uh, with what you said. They took the hold really too close to mid, so eventually they kind of funneled players into quad to kind of replace whoever lost their dual versus uh, device there in mid, and eventually they ran out of players to the point where I think it was Zipnix who came running out of apps there and backstabbed them. So if they just hold uh, held on to the bomb site from site or from pit or holds or held it a bit more defensively then they probably could have gotten more out of it it's a bit of a shame because it means they're in an awkward position now they are gonna have to well they have a shotgun a couple of pistols here and they're trying to make the most of it but dignitas are just merciless that shotgun almost took down two people that would have been great if nothing else, just for the for the bonus money you get from killing people with it, but it still leaves Scream alone in the one-on-four here, so... Uh, I'm not sure, I mean, this is about to be a sixth round for, for Dignitas, Samlo. Do you think do you think they can afford to give up many more on Epsilon's side? 
No, certainly not. But at the same time, Epsilon, I think a lot of their T side is going to come down to Foxio with that AWP. And if they manage to get a strong start on the T side, they could still manage to come into this uh, swing in, in the second half. Comes down to how Team Dignitas decide to hold things if they get a little overconfident or not after this after the first half results. But again, Epsilon, they're not out of this fight yet. If they can stop Team Dignitas here at six rounds, it can still go their way. They can still come out ahead in this half if they finish 8-7, etc. Device picking off Fox Yo, though, is not going to help things. Fox, unfortunately, missing a shot down mid and just getting caught completely out in the middle of nowhere. And that's one of the risky things about Fox, you know, it's just the fact that he's willing to go for those fights, really just committing to the shot, and if he doesn't get it, his team is kind of in a tough spot. Well, yeah, it's a great uh, return kill coming in here from Strafe. Unfortunately, it's just not enough. They thought it might have been an A push. I mean, they found two people up in the apartment, so you can't really blame Epsilon for jumping to the conclusion that maybe the rest were also going to come out of middle or something. But the fact is, the Danes have moved into the B bomb site and they've taken up hold and are putting down the bomb. They're, these fish are not going to survive this round, I think. I think these fish are doomed. I mean, we could be a pretty solid retake, but then again, they have one Molotov and one Flash to work with on the Epsilon squad, and I don't think that's going to be enough for them with the positions that Dignitas have taken up. Oh, they're going to make a run for it. This is going to be tragic. I mean, I don't know what variety of fish they are. They're pretty rare. I mean, there are terrorists gunning for these fish, so somehow they must be very valuable. Um, but yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to have to try another round to defend them. The most valuable goldfish in the history of the... Race of fish, right? It's really I mean, those big goldfish. Gold fish. Yeah, man, those are some those are some massive goldfish. That's like the that's what happens when a koi mates with a goldfish. You get like koi fish, basically, and that's what's over there. That's why those terrorists are after it. Master fish race. Yeah, sad, sad story there. But I mean, from from Dignitas' point of view, things are looking pretty great right now. It's seven and three, and they they're on the less favored side supposedly. And I think you're right, you did, you did hit an important note there somewhere earlier, which is that when Foxio starts to miss his shots, one of the big and sort of the big weapons that's supposed to be on Epsilon's side is, it's kind of, yeah, it's not working out for them, is it? They do need no. him to hit those opening kills. Okay, so is the is it the GoTV uh, interface that's bugged, or have Dignitas only picked up one aids? Okay, never mind. Yes, it, it is it's, bugged. It's like yeah. since the last update in CS, it's, it's been like this, so we kind of have to just deal with it. Right now, Uzi's going to deal with this B push pretty nicely so far. Wants is taken out immediately already. He's going to set up for a second frag, but he can't quite get it. Scream, however, from Coils manages to pick up one, and he's still alive. If he can just stay alive at this point, his team is actually in a pretty decent spot as the bomb will get planted, but there's still four players alive here for Epsilon to go for this retake. And this has to happen coming up from uh, Banana. Device is taking a fight with DMX, and he's going to come out on top, and that's a big kill. Scream is going to go down as well. Strafe coming in, picks off one. Sipnix is alone here. Behind new boxes in a one on two. Bomb ticking away. He's going to pick up the one headshot, and now he can duke around FX here, and this is going to be tough. Sipnix using the sound. He's going to go down, maybe too aggressive, and he picks up a kit. And I think there's just enough time for Foxio to pick up this defuse. And while well, Epsilon absolutely had to get that, so the fish are going to be safe this time around, and so are Epsilon. And that was scary. That was actually a very scary round for the CTs. It turned out to be very scary, yeah. Uh, I was actually surprised that Dignitas had had the opportunity to actually get into pretty okay after black positions because all of Epsilon was gathered around that B-bomb site when the bomb went down already. I guess barring GMX to some extent because he was still in Banana. But... I guess Epsilon make it work in the end, so you can't really fault them for it. They do get around, and that's at this point, that's pretty much what they want. They don't really care how they get it, as long as they get it on the board. Indeed, indeed. If they can get the next four in a row and finish 8-7, then they're perfectly well still in the game. But uh, they gotta they gotta keep winning rounds at this point. And that grenade on Strafe, how did it do that much damage? It's 56 damage in one grenade. I, it's just one of those nades. Yeah, it's just one of those nades. It's like, what's up? That's actually about as close to max as you can get, right? With the nade damage. Yeah. What I don't like is that this is a bug that Valve haven't well, noticed yet, I think. Ooh, that's a big entrance, and DMX is going to get caught too, so... Oh, man, that set off a landslide. Strave not being able to hold them back, and then GMX getting caught in a really awkward position. Now they're fighting for a 3-on-5 retake. The bomb very quickly planted, and... Epsilon are running away, and I think that's the that's the right choice. Unfortunately, there's just not much they can do. So I don't know. I mean, in that kind of setup, 
What I think actually, yo, tell me this, Vendetta. Was it just because the Ignis House put so many people in apartments and they weren't ready for it, or was there something else wrong with the uh, with the setup there from uh, from Epsilon? And it's an okay setup. I think it more or less came down to the fact that Bravo wasn't able to get a single frag or really do any damage at all to the people coming up from apps. Um, it's hard for him, obviously, with apps being smoked down the way it was, to actually get a good feel for how many members Dignitas had in apps. But I would have liked to see him take a bit more defensive position and actually just use the light post and pit and use that as cover and basically just funnel them and let them come at him one at a one you know one at a time instead of being so in the open because that puts everyone else on that side of the bomb site from epsilon in danger if he goes down that's what i'm thinking right it seemed like he was well to, to borrow one of some phrases you know a bit of a linchpin there right as soon as he as soon as he was out the whole bomb site basically blew up on a you know all of the ones yeah that's what not... happens when you pull the linchpin anders yeah once you take the blows away up. from mr grenade he's no longer your friend one <laughs> exactly. is going to take down Foxio, and they just have pistols and a few rifles here on the Epsilon side, and it is not working out for them. Device is going to take down two people, even with pistols. No AWP in the mix there. Wow. Oh, oh Scream. What's up, Scream? It's not going to be good enough, though. He's alone over at the A site, but he does manage to get two nice headshots. He's still alive, and it doesn't look like he's interested in backing off quite yet. He's huffing it over to the B site right now from Speedway. There's already Fetish alive, however, in construction. He's going to smoke off CT spawn, but Scream is just waiting on the edge of the smoke, looking towards that site, hoping to find an angle to work here, but there's the perfect crossfire setup here for Team Dignitas. Fetish in construction, AC from B, or from Banana, rather. Wherever Scream goes, he's going to be taking bullets to the face. Yeah, now he just wants to find his way out, I think, and it's not going to happen. AC will take him down, and it's another round for the the Dignitas team. It kind of feels like even just even just for Dignitas to have a Swedish flag somehow makes them better. I mean, we know Swedes are pretty good at Counter-Strike, but yeah, it seems to work for them. I've <laughs> just been disowned completely by all of your brethren. Ah, <laughs> oh, they know I'm joking, I'm sure. Oh, and AC traitor. The hate mill is going to start to flow. Shortly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're um, gonna poison your bacon. I'm gonna be in Sweden for more than a month, so you know, by the time I get back to my country, oh, you're warming it, them it, up. It'll, That's it'll what it cool is. Down. You're exactly. warming the Swedes up. Exactly. Oh, man, we're gonna so fully nice. convert them. Oh, wait a minute here, Strafe. Sibnix, how is he alive? There it is. That should have been a, a sure kill. That would have been upsetting if he had lost that one, but he doesn't. Picks up an AK, then they take a run for it. FX hiding in the corner. Look at this. He's letting everyone by. Then he's going to run out behind, and he's not going to get the kill. That's a little bit ridiculous. And somehow, Dignitas get into the site not losing. Well, they lose only two people. They could have lost the whole round right there. That crossfire, the potential was real, and now they're, they're on the edge of the flames. Uzi, or Scream rather, will find a headshot with that CZ. He's looking for another one here. If he can just pick up one more frag fast enough, this could be big for him. He's going to pick off the vice, but he's out of bullets. He's got one bullet left. Oh, he's got the AWP. He's going to try and no scope once here. He's spotted him once already. He knows he's in that corner and once is just hiding. And Scream doesn't have time for this. Oh my oh. god, he picks it up, but there's no time. He can't win the round. What a shame. That's so cool from Scream, and it's still not enough. I think that off shot actually hit. <laughs> Wants like his pinky toe. Yeah, that was, that was it. Was, was Scream jumping as well? Yeah, I think at the time was. Shot? Yeah, yeah, that was just that was just that's why Scream is awesome, dude. He's a it hero. Was, I, I, I don't think we could call that a calculated shot, but you know, almost got the job done. See, that's the thing, though. It's not didn't. about calculating with Scream. It's all about <laughs> it's all about the killer instinct, right? He's just got it. It's his hands, man. It's like musicians, you know, they play instruments. They don't have to think about it. Scream, he just lands crazy shots like that. It's it's in, it's ingrained in him, and it wasn't even a headshot. That's the thing. No, I think you're right. It, it must have hit him in the toe, basically, which was enough to to pick up the kill right there. Another defense coming out here, DA Bombsite, GMX with a really good double kill, just straight away. Dignitas has trying to fight him one at a time and it didn't work out for them. Now Device coming in, he's already spotted one, Guy Grenade is going to rain down, force him to stay in the open and Device takes him down now. It's all down to Strafe and he's getting backstabbed as well, runs into Sipnix here and he's going to run out of bullets and out of time. Oh, look at Uzi though, Uzi's about to go flashing his way through and he does manage to get the drop on Device, too quick for you Device. This still leaves it in a two-on-two -two retake situation here for Epsilon. Both of them coming around through library, but they have been smoked off. And this is buying a lot of time. Counter smoke goes down to block off Wants, to block off the pit, but Mad Spray goes through. And Sipnix and Wants between them just tear them to shreds. Dignitas now sending on 11 rounds going into the second half. 
Oh man, they lined up for once. They actually, they just lined up perfectly for him and he got both those kills in basically one click. That was pretty funny. Uh, unless, of course, you're on Epsilon side because 11-4 is not an ideal uh, first half here. But that's going to bring us into the second half. And we'll have to see if Epsilon can somehow do better on the terrorist side. If you aren't just joining us, then a big welcome to the show. This is Room on Fire and the ESCA Invite Season 17 League. It's a match between Dignitas and Epsilon. Neither lineup is completely intact right here. Um, you know, Wants is playing in instead of Dupree, and we have um, well, we have Strafe playing in instead of uh, SF. So almost a, a complete lineup for either team, but not quite. Uh, later this evening, we have I think three Fnatic matches coming up for you guys. So we have another three games after this one. So you have to stick around and uh, join us all evening for some good Counter Strike fun. Oh yeah, all night we got four matches total. All right, now we get to see. The ready has been made and both teams heading into this. Now we have to see what Epsilon have to offer us here on the T side and whether Dignitas are going to tear them to shreds like they did in the first half. Device just barely managing to dodge a nade there. Nicely done by him. Only takes five damage, but this is still information gained for him. Looking down mid, not really seeing anybody apart from the nade. So they don't have too much to go off of here so far, Dignitas. And you can see they just go to an ultra passive hold. Look at how far back they're holding everywhere around the map right now. They don't want to show Epsilon anything. Hmm. They really don't, and they have two of the smokes. Well, the only two smokes they have over at the B bomb site, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, it's much easier to smoke B than it is A, obviously. So I like that. I like AZ's idea here. And since he spots people out, he's gonna malt up the opening from A apps, and this could severely mess up whatever Epsilon is planning to do. There it is. And actually, there's going to be a smoke immediately following from the terrorist side. So now they're going to run through the smoke, flash their way in as well. Let's see if Epsilon can do this. They have to win this pistol round if nothing else. Strafe is coming up. That's an instant headshot. Once it's down as well. And up in the graveyard, AC is going to get found as well. No time. Clean. A perfect entrance from Epsilon. Nicely played from the Frenchman. Now everything's gone according to plan as far as they're concerned. This is looking very good. And this is the start that they needed for Epsilon. If they could have just got a couple more rounds in this uh, after that first half, they'd be feeling a bit better. But this is how they go about basically giving, getting off to a good start in the second half. Pick up the pistol. Now they have to survive the anti-eco. If they do those two things, there's no reason why Epsilon can't snowball out of control here. And I don't know. I'm kind of wondering because I think you're right. That would have been a great idea with the Molotov. I'm wondering if Epsilon brought that smoke to prevent that from happening, or if they were going to smoke off and jump out of the smoke anyway, because that's not such an uncommon uh, strat for terrorists to do, because once you put the smoke out, you can flash your way in, and it's really hard for people to see the flashes coming through, or they might just not be, you know, aware of it. They might be so focused on making sure nobody comes through the smoke that the first thing that actually comes through the smoke is a flashbang, and then you're even more screwed. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Either way, it worked out really great for them. Uh, isn't that like an old Nip trick, basically? Like, Nip used to cover the flashes with the sound of the smokes. Yeah, I think it's or, certainly or, something that's been popular for a while. I don't know if it, if it, it has is, It has though. been popular for a while, but I thought it was Nip that, that, like, were the first team to start really using that as a strat. was, like, you know, throw down the smoke, and then while the smoke is going off, they throw a bunch of flashes. As uh, GMX that, gets caught by a GMX. That, that type of thing has been around... Uh, ages, um, ages, ages, ages. Ages, okay. yeah. It was heavily used by pretty much every top team in Source. Yeah, okay. That's the source thing, but in 1.6, what about that one? What about that, Ben? Well, the, the noises weren't as effective uh, in 1.6. It's probably been used to some extent in 1.6 as well, but then again, a lot of the smokes and whatnot in 1.6 were kind of useless. Dignitas caught out in the middle. They picked up a couple of kills and even stole some AKs here, but they weren't able to save them. And as a result, and they do have a really, really good uh, eco round on their hands, right? They kill three people, but Epsilon do win the round, and Dignitas is going to have to eco once more here. So, yeah. Um, I mean, what Dignitas did that round to get at least the first kill was really simple, and we've seen it a bunch of times already. It's the flashbang from Coils, and then the guy waiting close by the corner of Banana spots or just jumps out around the corner as the flashbang pokes, and, and that's it. Nicely done. But now they have four HE grenades. Yeah, they're going for it, man. But Epsilon are patient. They wait at the bottom of T pit. They wait around the angles, and they take hardly any damage at all from the nades. So Dignitas still hunting. GMX actually going to get caught by Device over at Banana. Nicely done there. Foxio will find Wants just trying to push down. And it looks like Dignitas, they aren't willing to... They aren't really looking to waste any time here. They just want to get this round over with, see how much damage they can do, and get into that buy round. And they did quite a bit of it, actually. Uh, Uzi and FXO were both down to 25 and 15 HP. I think one more was down to around 50-ish. So 
a couple of shots more landing, I guess, would have done a pretty significant difference for Dignitas that round, but didn't quite work out for them. And now they're going to be able to buy up, and this is where Epsilon need to, to need to make their mark if they want to stay in this game. Yeah, winning this round would uh, would have a pretty big impact. I mean, Proto put them up around nine rounds, so um, yeah, that's within striking distance as it is. Dignitas must still have a four round lead. And now they have the rifles to try and do something with, and the smokes as well, and everything else that they might need. So uh, it's going to be tough, but we clearly Epsilon have the, the raw material to get these entry frags. They've shown us that much already, so they just need to keep doing it. Yeah, here comes the second, the third hurdle, basically, for Epsilon. They got the pistol, they got the Antico, now they have to deal with the first buy round here from Dignitas. But Device's position is very clever, he's gonna be able to spot up Boiler with a bit of a different angle, and he finds a headshot on a Foxio through the smoke. Fox with the nade in his hand as well, no chance to answer, and already Epsilon are getting pummeled at the beginning of this fourth round. I feel like that's one of those things where if it was matchmaking, I would have just reported that guy immediately. Just, you know, <laughs> randomly shooting through <laughs> smoke and picking up that kill is so annoying. And Device, look how quick he is, already spots out He's going to do it again. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I saw Uzi <laughs> yeah. there. I saw Uzi there, I was like, he's going to do it again! <laughs> it could have happened. Yeah, if you would have seen that in an Overwatch session, you would have been like, oh yeah, no question, that guy is... Because <laughs> well. it, it, it felt like he was shooting at the guy in Boulder and was like, oh, I didn't get him, well, I'm going to get that guy in mid instead. Absalom fighting their way through here, they've taken so much damage already, and AC and Wants are just cleaning them up. It's going to be Wants with a double, and AC with a double as well. So, Epsilon trying their very best, and I like this whole, some tiny detail with uh, with Molotov in the noob corner and forcing the CT that was actually hiding there, forcing him out into the open. Uh, good idea, but they still, they just didn't have the manpower to force their way through this time. It's a bit of a shame that the guy they forced out into the taking of the gunfight is Device, because Device has been playing really well so far this game. So he was, uh, I mean, he will fully, uh, I guess accepted their challenge to take uh, or to do some damage and it did quite a bit of it so it was a pretty easy cleanup for both uh, IZ and Wants in the end. AZ right. throwing a bit of a weird grenade up in apartments then falls back immediately. Device waiting on the other side of the smoke. See if he can get some smoke kills again. He's just doing through it. It's going to be one and he doesn't pick up a second one. He's going to go back for more though and he's get caught with a grenade out. Still picked up the kill on Fox Joe and now things are really getting annoying here for Epsilon. No doubt, that was obscene, and now Foxio has actually dropped the bomb on the other side of the smoke. It just clears now, but guess what? Betis has got a molly. He's going for the barbecue. Strafe is going to get caught, and it's a one-for-one -one trade here, but it's a two-man advantage. Make that a one-man advantage now for Dignitas. Epsilon striking back. They need to get around this corner. And there's just so many guns right here that Scream is just chucking them left and right, but he's got his AK now, and he has to find the shot. And he does! What's up? It's good news at least. Scream has the bomb if he can kill Sipnix in the next uh, 30 seconds and go and get the bomb down. I guess he's actually going to go back. He has an option to do either one. Either way, he's going to have to pick up a kill before he can think about putting down the bomb. Now, he spotted AC down in that pit, but he could just go and plant here. AC's going to have a hard time preventing it, I think. He wants to find, he, He's going for the win right now. He wants to find that shot, but he's n he now knows exactly where AC is, so he will get that plant. Now it's all about trying to catch the man on the rotation. AC's changing up his position. He's going to get into Graveyard. Scream spots him in time, whips around and gets the shot, and now we're into a 1v1. Sipnik spotting out Scream, though, and Scream taking the fight. Not willing to play it. He's looking to just win it decisively, and this time around, Scream falls short. Uh, that's a, such a shame, right? That's such a shame. Oh, wait a minute. Someone's been drinking too much, I think. All right, so, um, yeah, that's such a shame because that would have been an, uh, an absolutely epic one-on-two, right, for Scream. That would have been that would have been fantastic if that could have worked out. Really would have, especially seeing how Epsilon are in a pretty shoddy state uh, money-wise right now. They're going to have to eco in this round. That's most likely going to lead to 14 rounds for Dignitas, and I think that's a too big of a lead, really, to give up for them to, to ever come back from it. Feels like it's six round difference. They're ecoing. They have bought three Molotovs in their eco round. I'm not sure I've really ever seen that before. It's quite it. the commitment. It is a heavy investment, but I guess they more or less want to get the bomb down. And the more guns they take out at this point, the better, because Dignitas aren't exactly in a great state either with their money, so they can do some severe damage here to the Diddy side. They're certainly making an entrance. They actually do kill the two people defending, but 
Now, getting the bomb on and defending it until it explodes is quite a different matter. They they have got one AK and they've got Scream on, on I don't know, I guess two-thirds health. Oh, good Molotov, though, and DMX will burn to death. Scream with the CZ, though. We've seen how lethal he can be, but it's not going to be this time around. AC manages to catch him mid-air leaping, and this is going to be Device on the defuse. Dignitas now on their 14th round. Epsilon, they do the economic damage, but at this point... It's a little bit late in the game to be, you know, worrying about the money situation on the other team. They need to be getting rounds on the board. So that was an eco. They go into a buy. Yeah. But now they have to play perfectly going out from here. That Molotov was actually followed up by a flashbang as well, which is why I think the Epsilon player burned to death. The fish died, but Dignitas claim a victory anyway. 14 to 7. They're right now doubling the round score of Epsilon and are two rounds away from actually taking a victory here. It's the best of one game. So, I mean, Dignitas, they're well on their way right now. Moving in, there's Device, and Device has been very consistent with this AWP throughout this game. On the T side with the AWP, getting frags for Dignitas, and now once again, CT side. He picks off Uzi to start, and that is definitely not how things are supposed to go here for Absalon in this crucial round. They can't be going a man down. No, and it, it actually happened in spite of the fact that uh, Device actually got called out a little bit earlier. Like they spotted him out. And they went for the repeak, and he hadn't fallen back. He just kept on being aggressive. And I guess Device is sort of... He's in the zone right now. You can tell that he's just taking some, some pretty aggressive fights. And he's not afraid to try and do it either. And he's spotted the gun barrel here already of uh, Fox Show. So when he falls back, actually does get shot a little bit through the wall. They're going to try and see if they can pick up Device. But he's got back up in wards here. And almost picks up a kill. Device will get it. Seems like it's just Device all day right now. Yeah, he's top ranking for Dignitas, but it's going to be Device getting onto this A site. He's got that CZ, managed to pick up one. AC through the smoke. We'll find the headshot on Fox. Yo, he looks for the man on balcony and cuts him down. Strafe is out. And this is now 15 rounds on the board for Dignitas. At the end of the day, Device with the rotation ahead of time to get onto that site to get in position to be able to stop Epsilon from getting up there and getting control and blocking him out on short so that AC could then not find the frags as soon as they popped up on the minimap. Just really dirty play from Dignitas to put them on match point here. What what could Absalon do at this point? What, what do you think, Vendetta? How do they how do they secure another round here? <laughs> Given their state of well weaponry at this point, I don't really see any way. They can do it. I mean, I think it's an okay idea to go towards the B-bomb side, given how successful they were at actually taking it uh, with only pistols last time around. So that could give them an edge, but it's going to be really tough to hold off or retake from Dignitas. They already lose the first guy coming in. Strafe goes down. Fetish turns around for a flashbang and then recommits to spraying through that smoke, and it works absolutely wondrously right now. We see with a good double kill, but it's not going to be enough. It's still Fox Show in a one-on-three here. And using all his bullets, trying to kill Device. Now he's out of the bomb site and going to run into once, and he should be going down very soon. You know, he's in this 1v3 position, and now the bomb exactly is on that site. Dignitas have got all three members just watching it like hawks. AC is out hunting, and uh, making giving mistakes like that is actually going to could be a way back into this match for Fox. Yo, he's managing to swap out for the AK now, but he's still got 35 seconds left on this clock. This is actually a lot of time when he knows. At least one of these guys is on the site, and they're all low. Device gives away his position behind new boxes, misses a shot with that AWP. He's going to get mollied out in the open, and Fox has now turned this into a 1v1. Wants is the only man alive, and there's still 20 seconds left. Fox has plenty of time to hunt him. He's going to walk right into him, and he will take him down. That's a one-on-three for Fox Show, and that well-timed Molotov. Uh, landing in that corner, they're actually forcing Device out. Just a uh, uh, really cool play. And maybe Dignitas going a little bit too aggressively, but certainly uh, uh, Foxio managed to make absolute most of, uh, of the few mistakes they made there. Yeah, uh, I think it was a bit, uh, bit of a mistake by uh, uh, Easy at that point. Uh, I think he got a bit too overeager and kind of took the, the victory for granted that round as he jumped onto uh, FXO. Basically, he didn't even walk around. He kind of just like stomped towards him. But yeah, great work from FXTO actually making the most out of it, because it's still a 1v3. Yeah, hard to believe that this is going to spark the, the full comeback from Epsilon. They still need to win another seven rounds, basically without making any mistakes. But it's still kind of nice to see someone clutching one on three like that. Device, actually going to take down Uzi here. CZ, 75 in hand. He's going to get dropped eventually. Still, Epsilon got to be careful here. They did, If anything, they don't want to lose to an eco round, right? 
Yeah, yeah. At least, you know, if you're going to go out, go out in style, right? That you don't go out in style versus Ecos. Yeah, exactly. No. That's that's more like you go out, you know, you get bounced out by the bouncer or, you know, you're yeah, too you're intoxicated. Too, yeah, exactly. You're too drunk, so you have to get out. <laughs> yeah, they just throw you out basically in the trash. That's that's not good. That's not good. And we don't want to see that happen to Epsilon. But right now it's still Fetish AC and Sipnix alive. It's going to be an A play here from Epsilon. They just go barreling up short, take a little bit of fire from Arch, but that's only to draw attention away from AC, who's got the swag seven. And GMX only lets him get the one frag, but Sipnix picks up one of his teammates. And we're looking at a two... <coughs> a two on two. Yeah, Fetish coming up from behind. He's jumping and shooting at the same time. They're going to get the one kill in here, and GMX goes down. And Dignitas do take the eco round and make it a win. That jumping shot from AC was pretty sexy, but I guess the Sipnix with the double kill from the pistol, not bad either. That's going to be 16-8 in favor of Dignitas.